skip through to the, the later point here. Talk about an example of civic economics. How many, well, a whole bunch of you have had uh, principles of macroeconomics. And you know, John Maynard Keynes wrote the uh, general theory of uh, money, income, and whatever the other part of the title is. And he had a very simple model of the consumption function y is equal to a plus b times y. And almost as soon as the book was hot off the presses, people started to criticize him for the naivete of his consumption function, and immediately economists started plotting out lots of data. And one of the things that they observed was that uh, it appeared from the data, and given Keynes's original very naive specification, that the average propensity to spend was the same as the marginal propensity to spend, at least in the data. And that caused some, some degree of consternation. And with the consequence that uh, Milton Friedman and Modigliani and Miller and some others and the big names from the 50s and 60s in macroeconomics came up with different specifications of consumption. And so one of those specifications was life cycle consumption, meaning that your consumption pattern is governed by your lifetime stream of income and is not driven by short-term perturbations in your income. So if you win the lottery, it's not supposed to change your spending habits uh, markedly. It's also a justification for why a one-time tax cut does nothing to grow the economy, because people aren't fooled by that. Um, so the idea is that consumers maximize utility by their choice of consumption path subject to a wealth constraint. So this is a dynamic optimization model. And so we choose the time path of our consumption at time t subject to our wealth constraint at t. And notice that we're looking at our wealth over the whole planning horizon, over our whole lifetime. And our subjective discount rate is delta. And there is a fixed real interest rate, R. So although, if we are rational people and risk neutral, delta ought to be equal to R. But in many cases, it's not. The irrationality that sneaks in. And we have different time rates and time preference. We're not all risk averse to the same degree. CT is consumption at time T, big T is the length of economic life, WT is your earnings at time T, A is assets at time T. And the solution to the problem implies an Euler equation of the form that the marginal utility of consumption at T plus one should be equal to the marginal some fraction of the marginal utility of consumption at T. Okay, so you consume to the point where your marginal utility today is some proportion of your marginal utility of consumption in the previous period. And that should hold for all the pairs over your life cycle. And gamma, of course, is the ratio of the discount rates, the real rate R, and your personal discount rate, delta. If the two are equal, then you choose your consumption path so that your marginal utility of this period is the same as your marginal utility of consuming an extra unit of whole wheat bread yesterday. So the people who first worked with this model said, the model that we're going to specify is to put the uh, marginal utility on the left-hand side for T plus 1, and marginal utility of yesterday on the right-hand side. And we're going to estimate gamma, and we're going to have to deal with the error term epsilon. So the question that arises is, exactly how do we do that? So the basic argument is that we get some information so the information arises at, arrives at time t, and that tell, that's what tells us how much we need to consume. So part of the information would be the intercept, and another part of the information would be the consumption that we did yesterday, and the day before, and so on and so forth. And so those things are supposed to be independent of the error that we make as decision makers. So that the expected value of z transpose, which is that information that's arriving, should be independent of the error that we're making in our choice of consumption path. And so we would choose, we would specify that CT plus 1 is of this fashion, and we could plug that in to our positive utility function, the first derivative of it, and we could solve the moment condition that we have there for the unknown beta 0 and gamma. 
So the idea is that we we have some information <coughs> that's independent of the error term. So we set up a moment condition. This is true in the population. Taking the expectation away, we want it to be true in the sample. We have we assume something about the shape of u and hence you transpose. So we plug what we do know in here and uh, we pick alpha and beta to make the moment true. Moment restriction true. And that's our method of moments estimate. Okay, it works. So the two parameters that define consumption are beta zero and gamma. And those are the things that we were after. And we derive our estimates of them by imposing the moment restriction on the model. Oh, the that section of the notes came from this paper by Hall, the political economy from uh, 30 years ago. And more recent versions of the same kind of work you can find in Campbell and Mac So those are about all the remarks that I have to say about method of moments. Method of moments is uh, also really popular in some parts of time series analysis. So now you have a general idea of what method of moments is about. So if it comes up in 518 or 618, you'll have some notion of somewhere to go back in the notes and say, oh, this is what they're talking about here.